Hi guys! In this video we'll be looking at generating electricity, electromagnetic induction using a falling weight and motor, electromagnetic induction in a dynamo, factors affecting electromagnetic force, and we'll finish with a summary. In this video we're going to think about how we can generate electricity. The electricity that we use to power our electrical appliances is actually generated using magnetic fields. A simple generator contains magnets and a coil. And we're going to see how this can produce a current that can power electrical appliances such as a heater and a light bulb. Electric and magnetic fields are linked. The interaction between the fields is known as electromagnetism. So here we have an electromagnetic wave and it's made up of both a magnetic field and an electric field. We know that the movement of a charged particle within a magnetic field causes it to experience a force. So here we have an electron moving in a magnetic field and we can use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the force on this electron. So if the magnetic field is directed into the plane of the paper and the electron is moving to the left, we know that the force must be acting upwards on the electron. Remember that we're using the right hand rule because the electron is a negatively charged particle. A magnetic field moving past a stationary charge will also create the same force on the charged particle. So in this case, we're going to look at a magnetic field that's moving. And we're going to look at it at three different times, T1, T2, and T3. And you can see that the electron has remained in the same place, but the magnetic field is moving with a certain velocity to the right. Again, we're going to use our right hand to find the direction of the force on this electron. So the first finger points in the direction of the field and the second finger points in the direction of the motion of charge. Now let's imagine the magnetic field is a train and the electron is a person standing near the track as it passes. From the viewpoint of a person aboard the train, the grounded observer is going to appear to travel in the opposite direction to the train. So we're talking about relative speed here and the relative speed of the electron to the field is directed oppositely to the field velocity v. And so it's going to point to the left. And this means that again, the force on the electron is directed upwards. If the charged particle we're considering is an electron in a wire, the force creates a potential difference. So if we have a wire that is in a moving magnetic field, there's going to be a force on the electrons in the wire. And this is going to set up a potential difference. This is what's known as the electromotive force, or EMF. If the wire is part of a complete circuit, the EMF forces the electrons around the circuit, inducing a current. So there's going to be a net flow of electrons due to this moving magnetic field, which is going to create a potential difference, and therefore a current will flow. Remember that conventional current is in the opposite direction to the motion of electrons. Inducing a flow of current using relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field is known as electromagnetic induction. So this process is called electromagnetic induction, and this is how electricity is generated. Now let's look at the specific case of electromagnetic induction using a falling weight in a motor. We can demonstrate electromagnetic induction with a simple experiment using a falling weight attached to an electric motor coil. So the setup is like this. A weight is attached to a coil which is inside a motor. The weight is going to fall downwards and this is going to lead to the coil turning inside the motor. So the falling weight causes the coil to spin and this moves the coil between the poles of a magnet inside the motor. So here's the moving coil, which is turned by the weight falling down. And it's going to move between the poles of a stationary magnets inside the motor. If we 
connect the motor to a bulb, it will light up as a result of the induced electromagnetic force in the circuit. So the effect of the falling weight is going to be to induce a current in this circuit. And this is due to the induced EMF. We're now going to look at the example of electromagnetic induction in a dynamo. Electricity is often generated by converting kinetic energy to electrical energy. This can be done in a generator or dynamo. The main difference between a generator and a dynamo is the type of electricity that they produce. A dynamo can be fitted onto a bicycle to power its lights. It is composed of a magnet which is free to rotate near a circuit. So inside a dynamo, we have a magnet which is near a closed circuit containing a bulb. Pedalling the bicycle causes the wheels to turn. This rotates the magnet which moves relative to the wires in the circuit. So kinetic energy is produced by turning the wheel and this in turn will rotate the magnet. The induced EMF results in current flow within the circuit and the bulb within the circuit lights up. So if the magnet is not rotating, there is no light in the bulb, it doesn't switch on. However, when the magnet starts to rotate, it produces a moving magnetic field, which causes an induced EMF in the circuit, and the bulb lights up. We're now going to look at some of the factors that affect electromotive force. We know that an EMF can be induced when there is relative motion between a conductor and a magnet. Either the magnet can be stationary, like in the case of a coil rotating between two magnets, or it can be rotating, like in the case of a dynamo. In both cases, there must be some relative motion. The magnitude of the EMF increases under certain conditions. First of all, if the speed of the conductor's movement relative to the magnet is increased, for example, in the case of the weight turning a coil, if we have a larger mass, the coil is going to move faster because the gravitational potential energy will convert into more kinetic energy in the case of the larger weight. And therefore, there will be a higher EMF induced in this circuit. The EMF will also increase if the speed of the magnet's movement relative to the conductor is increased. So for example, in the case of the dynamo, a magnet rotates in order to turn the light on in a bulb. And this is going to occur over a certain time, delta t. If delta t decreases, for example, if you pedal faster on your bike, the induced EMF is going to increase. This is because the magnet is turning more quickly and can be seen because the bicycle light will shine more brightly. The magnitude of the EMF will also be larger if the conducting wire is made into a coil. So if we have a rotating magnet near a wire and a rotating magnet near a coil, there's going to be an increased EMF in the case of the coil. The EMF will also increase if the number of loops on the coil is increased. So in this case, we have n equals four turns on the coil, whereas in this case, we have n equals seven turns on the coil which means we have an increased EMF for the coil with a larger number of turns. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap reply smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.